Welcome back, Shaloners. Well, we're going to continue talking about something that we've done a video on this week. The cool girl. Being the cool girl. You know, the chest pop that I gotta do. I did a video yesterday on breaking down the cool girl myth and the cool girl trope and how it attracts beta males and truly erodes who we are as women. And it's not about, oh, you have to be a certain kind of girl. You have to be really girly or you have to be like that truly granola crunchy girl. Nah, it's about us accepting that, hello, most of us are both of those things. People don't have to be just one thing. We aren't. We're multidimensional, complex, bad bitches. And beta males don't see that. And instead, they try to fit us into this mold of like the cool chick, chest bump. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't even, I can't say it. Like the cool girl without doing this weird, creepy body roll. But one thing I asked you guys at the end of the video was if you are a girl who's like not ultra high maintenance, you know, you're into like camping and fishing and and like other things other than like hair and nails and lashes, which is what I'm into. Do you think guys treat you with less respect? Because one thing I said was when you date me, you know what you're getting, right? You see how I come and it's like, all right, that girl is not the girl I'm going to take out into the woods and have her pee in a bush and she's going to be cool with it. She's not. I won't. I'm not that. I'm not that. But if you are a girl who's like down for that kind of thing and like, dude, good for you. That's I, I wish I was. I wish I was. But I know what I am at this point. Do you think that's affected how guys have treated you? If you genuinely like hanging with the dudes, do you think that they, you know, when you date someone, they don't really try as hard. They don't give you a lot of respect. They like don't understand if, hey, maybe one day you do want to go to Le Cirque and wear a nice dress and have your, your a full beat on. And a lot of you guys are like, yes, yes, that's been a huge problem. Like I do hunt and fish. I grew up in the country, whatever it is. But like, I don't feel like guys treat me with respect unless I'm like that Paris Hilton princess. Is it possible to get respect and to be treated like a princess if you don't present as one? If you're not all sparkles and ruffles and doilies, can you find a guy who treats you in that same princessy way? And I was like, hmm. This is a case for Detective Blondie. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to break it down. And I'm going to give you some examples of female celebs who do embody like the non-princessy vibe, but they still get some respect, sweetheart. And I'll tell you exactly how. But first, just want to remind you, if you have a question of your own, want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, find me on my website, shallonlesser.com. And if you want a video shout out and connect with me that way for a birthday or whatever, Find me on Cameo at ShallonXO and be sure to follow me on Instagram at ShallonXO because I let you guys weigh in on this and suggest, you know, celebs who really do embody that low maintenance, high respect hybrid that like we're all going for. Like, do I really have to have a full beat on to get some fucking respect in this town? No. So I asked and y'all answered and I love you for it. I love, 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 love when you guys give me feedback because like you think of people that that I can't even conceptualize. But first, let's define the term. Let's define what it is and not. So we talked in the previous video about the cool girl. Cool girl. <laughs> I'm sorry. And look, I even wore like a grubby t-shirt. I sleep in this t-shirt. I might have slept in it last night to prove that I am not all caftans and hoop. Well, today I'm hoop earrings. But you know, we're all that duality. We're all so multidimensional. And it's crazy making when the world tries to put us in just one lane. Even if we're 90% in that lane, like I'm in 90% of the girly girl lane, but I also ride horses. I was in ROTC. I can shoot. I can two-step. I can ride. I can do all these things. And like, hey, maybe I could just have the freedom to do that. Maybe I could step into other sides of my personality without offending the shrimp penis males in the world or without feeling like a traitor to my own lane. You know, like I... I've told in the last video, it's like when I was in college, I was doing all these different things, ROTC, sorority, theater and stuff. And it's like, if I wasn't ultra, ultra, ultra sorority, I didn't really fit in. If I wasn't ultra army, I didn't fit in. And it was like, bro, can't I just like switch it up a little as I see fit? And the cool girl trope boils down to this girl has no standards. She just goes with the flow because she's just desperate to be whatever a guy wants her to be. Ha <laughs> ha. We ain't that. Like I said before, if you're on this channel, you ain't that either. But it's hard to know how to present ourselves to the world in order to get maximum respect, maximum upward mobility, you know, and maximum good results. I asked you guys, like, who you see as these embodiments of, like, females who are low-key but still command it. Number one, 
Michelle Obama. I mean, of course, of course, it's that when they go low, we go high. It's that poise, it's the confidence, it's I don't need to respond to the pettiness, it's I have a mind of my own, I have a lane of my own, I have a thing of my own. You know, I'm not just Barack's wife, I am a Harvard educated lawyer. Whew. Whew. Number two, Jada Pinkett Smith. Jada and Will. You guys have asked for videos on them. I mean, this is my theory on Will and Jada. And I'm not saying this to like undercut their relationship because I actually think they have an amazing relationship. I also think they're two homosexuals. I have, from working at Star, I have just, we, when you hear a story enough times, and look, I think it was like the 80s or, or the early 90s and they were like, listen, we are two black homosexuals in Hollywood. We're not gonna make it on our own, out and proud. It's just not gonna happen at this point and at this climate. We are best friends. Let's team up. Let's have a great relationship and we can do whatever we want on the side. We can raise kids together. And you know what? I don't hate that idea. Do you know how much I prefer my gay friends to like every dude I've dated? Michael, you and I, baby, we're getting hitched. Let's make it 2025. We're going to blow that wedding out. And then we can go do whatever we want the night of the wedding, then the honeymoon, and then we'll, we'll meet up in Jamaica for the honeymoon. Just hang out. Like, I, I think that's fine. But she does command respect. There's no question that Will respects her and that she respects him. And she's well-respected in the industry. And just even when she does her red table talks, she has this like anchoring vibe. Like if Jada told me to do something, I'd be like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She speaks. She's like this, uh, she's like this wise Siamese cat, just like flicking her tail and like spitting wisdom. And I'm like, yes, she just seems to know. She has a very calming presence, as does the third biggest person you guys suggested, Lisa Bonet. Here's what I know about Lisa Bonet. And you guys have been like, do a video about Lisa and Jason. I don't feel like I know enough about them to warn a whole video, so we can, this can serve as that. Jason Momoa, as you know, is like my dream man. He's the background on more devices than I care to admit. I am obsessed with him. I am obsessed with any man that can do the haka. It is like, I see a hawk at like panties come off. I can't even handle it. Like I'm talking to, like seeing a rugby player right now, like who's Polynesian. And I'm like, I know you can do the haka. Stop with holding it from me. Give it to me. That's all I want from you is a real life haka. But he is an alpha, 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 alpha. He stands up for other people. He stands up for his woman. He's like devoted to her. Behind the scenes though, I have heard from multiple people that he's very like annoying. It just and then he like won't stop talking. He's kind of like like a like a twelve year old boy, just like ho oh, oh, ho and like fart jokes and like there was a story on set with uh, when he did Aquaman with Amber Heard that like when she was up in a harness she like had to spend most of the the movie in a harness and so they would give her a book to take up there and when he wanted attention he would rip pages out of the book until she started paying attention to him. I would have stabbed him in the face. I would have been so fucking annoyed. But that's that's him. And then I'm like. Why is he with someone who seems like this calm vessel of wisdom like Lisa Bonet? Lisa Bonet, I believe she, ha she, there's like a pleasant jangling of jewelry when she moves, you know? I bet she smells just like, like, like vanilla and like essential oils that she, that she pressed herself and she can grow anything and she just, ah. <sighs> You know, charcuterie is our relaxation word. I think Lisa Bonet can be our relaxation word as well. She just seems to like, got it going on. And she raised Zoe, who also is shades of like calm centered wisdom, love it. So it was like, what a weird match. Eh, it's roots and wings. You know, I think she grounds him and he is stimulating and like sort of like, oh, silly Jason. Like they work, they've been together for so long, but Lisa Bonet is not the, she's not the princessy girl. She's not the glitter and butterflies. But one thing she has that aligns with another person you guys suggested, Kristen Bell. And in fact, okay, let me just read through the list. Let me read through the list of who you guys suggested. So we got Lisa Bonet, Kris Jenner. Kris Jenner was a big one. I do believe Kris Jenner's girlier, but she also takes absolutely no fucking shit. And she doesn't do it by being a huge, huge diva. That's debatable, but... Even if you discount her, we'll keep going. Rihanna, obviously, our Lord and Savior. Kristen Bell, Chrissy Teigen, Eliza Schlesinger, since we brought her up. 
Some of you guys said me. Well, only my friends, but thank you. <laughs> and then for the younger set, we've got Emma Watson and Zendaya. Zendaya came up a lot. So what do all these women have in common? Because, yeah, they're all like girly girls at some point. They're, they're diverse. Zendaya is like cool nerdy but also get her on the red carpet and it is ferocious same with emma watson so incredibly educated so cerebral so concerned with social issues but can't that girl slay a red carpet and then you have people yeah like Kristen bell who seems she's not that like diva fashion chick she's like sweet but none of these women seem to take any shit any shit and you think okay well how does that translate to getting a good relationship it is everything it is not about how we look. It is about how we present ourselves to the world. And it's easy to mistake those two things for being one and the same. Well, that's how you look. Well, it's part of how you look, you know? Obviously, people are going to get treated differently if they look homeless or if they look like they just stepped off a yacht. This is human nature. But these women manage to have this duality and this authenticity, whether it's I got a beat on on the red carpet and then I'm in glasses studying at the library or I'm this hippie earth mama, or I am this political pillar of American fortitude. And it all circles back to the same place. Quality partners, quality relationships, whether that's with a boy or with a girl, or with uh, not like, well, yeah, girl dating or friendships or whatever, or simply their relationship with themselves and how they manifest to the rest of the world. Not taking any shit is key. And when you're a high maintenance, when you're the girly girl type, People, like I said in the video, you know what you're getting with me. You know when I show up on a date, that date's not going to be at a drive through You're going to take me to a restaurant. There's going to be cloth napkins. That's simply what I expect for people in my life. Not everyone does. That's fine. Do whatever you want. I don't care. But when you're, if you're a little bit more low maintenance, again, like you might worry or people might interpret that more casual, go with the flow attitude as something that can be taken advantage of. So here's how you correct that. First and foremost, you got to have boundaries for yourself. OK, the world will only treat us as well as we treat ourselves. And what we put out there in terms of vibe and self-esteem and belief in ourselves is mirrored exactly back to us. All of these women who I mentioned know who they are. They are authentic women. They are not afraid of who they are. They're not apologizing for who they are, whether that's Kris Jenner. And she's like, this is simply who I am. Or that's Lisa Bonet living on a farm in Hawaii, growing avocados. This is who I am as well. Or it's Kristen Bell, who's just this little ball of sunshine. This is who I am. But who I am is not created to please you, and it is not malleable. They live a life of discipline. Living a life of discipline is something that I've started to talk about a lot because it's something that a therapist friend of mine told me I was specifically not doing. <laughs> She's like, your last relationship failed because you do not live a life of self-accountability and therefore, you let bullshit into your life. You normalize chaos. You don't require enough of people because you actually don't require enough of yourself. I was like, oh, she dragged me to hell and back. But she wasn't wrong. She was completely right. And my mindset since that day has shifted. That day over skinny margaritas and, Rita's and chips. I could really go for both of those right now. My mindset shifted that I'm like, that is so true. That when I become accountable to myself, when I'm living a life of, flossing every day, working out every day, saying my prayers, the vitamins, Hulk Hogan mentality. Then when someone comes along trying to act in a way that is undisciplined, no, that's not what we do here. It's foreign to me. It's no longer normalized. And that's what these women do. That's what these women have in common. Something else they all have in common is they have passion projects. Chrissy Teigen has her food thing that she really is super passionate about. Rihanna has the lingerie line. Michelle Obama wrote a book, you know, and this is this is important because it keeps us infused with a sense of our own independent identity. When I was looking over this list of ladies, I realized that I realized that the key to life is saying no. Some people, you know, like signs at TJ Maxx, like say yes, say yes to everything. No, boo, we say yes enough. We say yes to like a finger in the butt. No, we can say no for things. We can say no. I dated this dude and he had a tattoo on his hip that said yes. And I was like, what's that mean? He's like, cause yes is like the life force. And he was the most annoying person. And at the time I was like, that's really cool. And that is a cool idea. That is a cool idea. It's like, 
It keeps your horizons open. It keeps you trying new things for sure. But women are taught to say yes all the goddamn time. All the goddamn time. It's what gets us killed. Oh, okay, yeah, you can come in and use my phone. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm. Nope, nope, we're all done with that. I'm about the no, the revolution of no. And the women on this list, I can all picture them saying no, and no is a complete sentence. It's a phrase I love. No is a complete sentence. No. And they don't always, I don't picture them saying it the same way. Lisa Bonet, I think, would say no to something, a person or a situation or an idea that doesn't serve her and like, that doesn't align with my perfect vibration. Right. Kristen Bell would say like, you know, I appreciate that suggestion, but that doesn't work for me. Chris Jenner would say, that's not how we're going to do that. Right? With that kind of like sinister Machiavellian smile. I love her. I love her. So what does this willingness to say no have to do with us? And how can we translate this into real life? And how can we use this to get more respect in our dating life? It goes back to what I was saying, the life of discipline. When we have that life of discipline, like I said, bullshit becomes very unfamiliar. Suddenly, like we are valuing our time. I keep a schedule. I don't play hard to get, I am hard to get. That is simply how my life manifests. So no, I don't like, accept a late night date. I don't accept shit last minutes. I'm busy for the next 10 days as far as you know, baby boy. I also become attuned to bullshit and other people. Weakness, lack of discipline, lack of ambition, and I find it gross. Who wants to be around someone living contrary to their own goals? If you're working out and if you're trying to lose weight and if you're trying to get healthy, you're not hanging out with competitive eaters, you know? Like, you are orienting yourself to people and situations that pull yourself towards achievement of your goals. If you're trying to get that degree, like, you're probably not hanging out with the burnouts and the stoners, like, staying out all the night at a rave. You're like, no, I have to maybe be by myself. I have to say the no. Because then you are moving towards a future that serves you. And so are these women. So when it comes to dating, it's not about how you look. It's about what you permit. A girl I know who is one of like the more granola girls, we're not really friends anymore, but she moved away, she's great. But she would go out, no makeup, just like lank hair, jeans, Converse, t-shirt. She was, she was, had a very pretty face, but she was just like zero fucks. And I was like, that was cool. And I was in my like bandage dress phase, just like done up. Guys would chase that bitch around. Leo DiCaprio chased her around a club in LA. I saw it with my own two eyes. And on paper, she was kind of plain, you know? She didn't stand out the way these other girls did. But that's when I remembered or realized, actually, she did stand out. I was the one who blended in. I was the one who blended in, not because of what I was wearing, because I was fucking desperate. I was like 23, I needed a guy to like me. I thought, just 10 more layers of bronzer and it's gonna happen. 11 more clip-in extensions and I'm gonna find true love. And she went out there authentic as fuck, not permitting, not promoting anyone who she did not want to speak to. She knew herself, she was solid in herself, and that came through like radiation. It was coming off of her in waves and everyone, it was like a flowers turning towards the path of the sun. People loved her. And she has like an amazing relationship with an amazing alpha male now, you know? Took me a lot longer to get that memo because I wasn't willing to be authentic. Now, I found my middle ground where I am more authentic. Like I can be in, in the dirt, in the mud, in Montana or whatever, and I can be all dressed up in the French Riviera. And that's authentic to me, so I attract authentic people. So here's how you can manufacture that authenticity in your own life. Because like I said, it's not about what you look like, it's about what you present. And what we present boils down to what do we permit and what do we promote. You have to set your boundaries and your standards from the jump, from the jump. If you're swiping on a guy and he's like, you up, LOL, DTF, if you respond back to that, you have told that guy, okay, that works. You can't put the genie back in the bottle. It is very, very hard to command respect retroactively. It just is, you know? And it sucks because a lot of times when we get the memo like, fuck, I'm acting wrong. People have already decided how they feel about us in the situation. And so I always encourage you guys to like clean house. Like if you're going through a true like revolution of self and leveling up, clean house, right? 
Why level up if you're going to keep the same shitty people in your life? Don't accept last minute dates. If the date itself doesn't rise to your standard, excuse yourself. Don't stay for more than one drink. No, I'm sorry. Another thing that I've learned is a willingness for silence. I, as one can imagine, am a chitter chatterbox. Like, you know, on dates, I will default to kind of like journalist mode where I find myself sort of interviewing the, uh, the dude because women have been conditioned that silence is deadly, right? We can't just let silence sit, even though that is so crucial because long-term relationships, they, there's a lot of downtime. It's not all just fun dates and rosé and having sex. It's laying around on the couch. It's having a bad night and just being chill. And guys, what they define as like the ideal girl is someone who is easy to be around. Now that is not the same for every guy. And that's what we talked about in the cool girl video. A beta means easy to be around is she doesn't require anything of me. Uh, I can watch shows about power tools and she doesn't care. Mm -mm. A quality man defines easy to be around as someone who is focused on growing this relationship together. She's not drama. She's not jealous. She's not in a spiral. She is like, She's easy to be around because she's inspiring. Isn't that who Michelle Obama married, right? Isn't that who Kristen Bell married? Isn't that who Chrissy Teigen married? People who want them to be their best self. Baby girl, I want you to start that website. I want you to write that book. I want you to run for office. I want all these things for you. It's easy for a quality man to be around a woman like that because that inspires him to be better too. But again, it goes back to, well, that's got to come from us. We have to be manufacturing that in and of ourselves. We have to live that life of discipline and we have to put it into action. So now when I go on dates, I don't, I don't talk my face off. If he can't fill a silence, if he can't ask some questions about me, this is the data point. You're kind of telling me all I need to know. And it's, it's a calmness from within. It's, I don't need to twist myself either in looks or in conversation or in behaviors into someone I think you want so that I can hang on to you. I don't need to hang on to you. I might want to. I might be sad if you're not in my life. But if you aren't in my life, that's proof positive you don't belong in my life. We're not a fit. Okay, I want to let that play out from the beginning. I say all the time, 99% of the questions you guys send me, it doesn't, they don't boil down to, I didn't know. I didn't understand that this was going to be our dynamic. I didn't know this is who he was. It always comes down to, I know. And if we are truly our authentic selves, whether it comes in a princess dress or camo, we can see that in other people. We're more willing to read that writing on the wall and say, ah, no, I saw it. I saw it. I saw that flash. I saw the truth. And you know what? I like you. But I can see also that what you're presenting to me maybe isn't authentic. Or if it is, it's not in line with my authenticity. So I think we're good here. We're going to part ways. No harm, no fuss. But that's something we got to practice at. It doesn't always come naturally because society tells us we can't come naturally. You know, like we're not allowed to say no. We're not allowed to turn down a guy who might like us. We are certainly not allowed to say, no, this date doesn't work for me. No, I don't. No, this doesn't work for me. This isn't what I enjoy doing. This to me doesn't constitute effort. I am allowed to define effort how I define it. You, bro, you are allowed to define healthy and happy and intellectually stimulating however you want, but it might just be that simply these two things do not align. So as you can see, getting respect isn't about how you dress yourself up. It's about how you present yourself, how you carry yourself, and not just how you present yourself to the world, how you present yourself to yourself. And it goes back to that life of discipline. Am I living a life that I am proud of? And if I am proud of it, I'm not going to accept someone in my life who I'm not really proud of how they live their life and who isn't proud of me either. I want them to respect. It's like, man, Shallon gets her work done. Shallon is hardworking. She's a good person. She gives back. She's there for her friends. I see that. I want someone who sees through the grubby tea or the clipping extensions or whatever into who I am in that dimensionality. But I have to see it first. And in order to see it, I have to create it. It all comes back to the concept we talk about so much here on this channel, the warm-blooded animal. The warm-blooded animal is the animal who manufactures all this stuff from within. All of their confidence, all of their positive attributes, all of their discipline. 
A cold-blooded animal is someone who feeds off the crowd to get what they need. The Stassi babies, the Kylie Jenners, the real housewives, right? Those are not the women we want to look up to. I mean, I, I do think Kylie's changing. You know, she's... I think she's grown up a ton since having that baby. And, oh, that baby is so cute. The patience video. I only ever want a baby when I see Kylie and Stormy together. They just make it look so cute and so fun. I'm not sleeping with Travis Scott. I, Stormy turned out adorable. I am not sleeping with... No, I'm good. But the warm-blooded animal isn't called the hoop earring animal. It's not called the six-inch heel animal. It's called warm-blooded because that's what matters, what's on the inside, not what's on the outside. How we dress ourselves up, the world might not ever understand it. People are always going to categorize us and put us in little containers on perfect little shelves. People do it to me, people do it to you. That is how the world is gonna work. But once we know, hey, I'm multidimensional, I'm so many things, I have friends and I have family who understand that, then we can move through this world more warm-blooded and more bulletproof because like, oh, you don't like me? I just put up my Instagram. Sounds like a you problem. That sounds like a personal issue. That's not my problem. That reflects, that's a reflection of you and your issues, not me. I know who I am. I like who I am. And I and none of these women on this list feel the need to explain themselves. No is a complete sentence and I like myself is also a complete sentence. So look for people when it comes to dating, look for situations to infuse with that vibe. I like me, no thank you, this is it, take it or leave it. For more, click like and subscribe. We're doing a whole bunch of new videos during quarantine. And yes, the glow up is coming, coming super soon. But like I said, connect with me on Instagram and Cameo at ShallonXO. And if you have a love question, find me on my website, shallonlesser.com.